What's up everybody? Welcome. <clears throat> Today I've been working on improvements to the integer vector class and I found huge simplification for the whole game engine here for all of Songbringer to um, use this integer value class in a more appropriate way. So basically, um, I used to have this integer vector class here, and this was I would use this for. Um, I'm using this so that I can represent a floating point value as an integer. So that if I were to make this a multiplayer game at one point, um, I would have a way of representing floating points as actual integers, so that I could pass them cross-platform, and then I would always get the same thing because they're actually comparing integers, not floats. So basically what the whole the concept is that basically it takes whatever floating point value you give it and it divides it by a thousand or it multiplies it by a thousand to store it as an integer. So then so you got a thousand or three digits of significance in your um in your fractions. So basically I found that um this operator right here is super magical. It's so great because it converts whenever it needs to. It converts the um, integer vector class into the floating point class. What's up, Alex Pita? Yo, yo, man! It's probably late for you or super early. Welcome, hello. So yeah, as I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've finished all those changes. So I'm actually gonna run it and see if. Uh, See if I can find any bugs. Looks like the water hoppers are working all right. And see if I can get the, the hat to work. Yeah, this is looking a lot better. Slow excellence. Yes, I did finish the ripple. I went with a totally different technique. So, you know, yesterday I was doing trying to do that whole um that whole shader for that effect, but man, when I finally got down to it, I'm like, you know what? I really want to use an actual pixel art effect for this. Um, because it allowed me to do something really cool. Actually, check this out. It looks way cooler with pixel art than I ever could have done with a, actually I'll, I might do a ripple eventually, but check this out. I was able to do a droplet and then make this, the like real water, when a drop of water falls, it has this like blue and it, it makes another water droplet like come flying out of the center. So that's what this animation is. It's got a little bloop going on. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And then also the water skippers, when they hit the ground, they hit the ground a few times, so they kind of do what a natural ripple would automatically. So I really only had to draw one single ripple, and it all kind of worked out. So that was cool. Um, so yeah, I, I'm actually, uh, I've been doing all these integer vector improvements today because I want to actually simplify all of the games, um, X, Y, what's up, babe? <laughs> yeah cool I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out too and I still have the the shader if I do want to get back to this and try and work with this shader um, I'll go and you know I might add a shader on top of that to make it look even better so um, I'm pretty sure that this is looking good I'm going to run around actually the, the overworld a little bit and um, see if I can find anything that's broken still. So hopefully not, and then I can just check in this integer vector code, and then I can create a integer vector three class, which I can use for all the positions of every entity in the game. So basically what I'm trying to do here is convert every everything to use 3D, 3D positions. So, Right now, everything has an X and a Y, and I want to add Z as well. So that's really all that's going on. Um, right now, I have Z as a separate uh, integer value, and so it just doesn't make as much sense. Let me show you what I mean. 
um, in my position components. Here it is. Position component has an integer vector 2 position, and then it has an extra integer float for z. So really all I want to do is convert this into an integer vector 3 class, and that'll really simplify a lot of the systems. Awesome. Z Zybook? Is it Zybook or Zibook? What's up, man? Welcome. Hello and hello. Okay, so what I'm doing is running around and seeing if I can find any kind of bug. Let's warp to the ship. Oh, that, I guess that kind of is a bug that um, there's some water hoppers on the ship. I can, oh, that's easy fix though. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Zbook. All right. What's up, Zbook? What's up, Xbox Taco thing? It's going really good. For you guys that just joined, the ripples got done last night. Love how they turned out. You can see some ripples here. In the bottom of this screen, well, let's go over to this screen. You can see better ripples. There we go. Some water hoppers are leaving ripples. I like how the ripples turned out. The frogs, they jump, but they don't quite jump accurately. But I'm not just not worried about it right now. I'm, I might make it jump them jump more accurately later. It's not really a huge detail that has to be done right now. I'd rather focus on these more important things, about like the integer vector 2 and all that. So, um, so I'm just going to do... I guess I'll just keep testing for a bit. I'm pretty sure everything's working all right. This is ready to check in. Oh, yeah. I was going to turn off the water hoppers. Hey, Grubok, what's up? <clears throat> good, 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 good. Yeah. I'm, um, anything that I don't cover, please just ask me. I'd love to show you what's going on here and, you know, allow you guys to be involved with it, you know? Um, <clears throat> I know, right? Yeah, the weird wide oval thing for sure. That was not that cool. It, it might be that later on I'll make the shader work with those um, pixel art ripples. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, my background in the industry is I was a programmer for a long, long time. So I made, I made, I worked for companies. Um, I made my own video games mostly though. I made, I worked on my own mostly the, for those 20 years. And um, for 10 of the years, I started doing music. So I've been doing music for about 10 years. I've been doing music for art for a couple of years. This is my first video game ever doing the art for it. Um, yeah, Grubuck, I didn't try um, to work on the shader at all last night. So I just left it as it was because um, I was much happier with the pixel art ripple. And you can check it out. See the pixel art ripple. I can do a little, I was just telling these guys the bloop. You can see the 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 the, the, um, the droplet hits the water and then bounces up back again, like the water goes bloop blue. So that's why there's two ripples, and I can get a really cool effect going like this, very custom, with pixel art without having to worry so much about how to do all that math. So you know, it's just it turned out to be an easier thing, and later on I may actually go add a shader as well. So. Um, Xbox Taco, it's probably going to cost about uh, $16. What's up, Sergeant Sam? Okay, so I'm going to turn off the water hoppers when we're inside the ship. Same with the flies. There, so now we can go just check that out. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, right? I really, I'm really happy with how that turned out with the ripple, with that little extra drop droplet flying off again. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna check and see if the water hoppers are not on the, the ship now. Oh, I gotta delete. I gotta kill these enemies first. Good. Okay, we just still have a butterfly. That's fine. Alright, good. I like that. I'm gonna go and... Oh, sorry. I just refreshed my chat window instead of running the game. I always do that. I always seem to do that. It's funny. Okay, so yeah, I'm just... I'm checking... I'm gonna try and run around and see if I can find any bugs regarding the new integer vector class. Integer values. I'm pretty sure it's okay. I'm going to go up to an actual level that might reveal any bugs. Oh, uh, good point. A frog got stuck in the teleport. Thanks, Z-Book. Ha! <laughs> yes. They're in the game. Yes, yeah, slow excellence. I do go over the the behavior trees. Um, I can I can go back and show you a a little bit more though. Let me show you that after. Um, let me just go and play a level really quick, a little bit of le one level, and then I'll go and show you a little bit of how one of the behaviors works. It's um, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. So what I wanted to verify up here was that these, yeah, the doors still work. Looks like they're working fine. Good, here's one that's locked. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everything's working. I'm gonna go ahead and check this code in. Cool, that's good enough. All right, yeah, so the behavior trees um, are a pretty simple thing. If you go and um, Research how they work. That's the that's probably the best thing to do to understand how they work is to go You know read an article or two on them. So I read some articles and digested that information and finally wrote my own system for it Nice Yes, yes, they do Xbox taco. They make you invincible for a very short time So you can actually use them as a gameplay Thing, but I am gonna actually add a limitation to that. So I don't like it that you can have all these cactuses stored up and you can be invincible for so for a long time if you keep using them over and over and over. So what I'm going to do is make it so if you use them once, that's cool. But if you use them again within a certain shorter or a, or a short amount of time, it's going to make it so it hurts the player. So it's going to punish you for for basically getting too high. All right. So yeah, behavior trees are really they're they're um. They're very powerful things to implement. Like here's the frog. Actually, the fly is pretty simple. Well, a frog. I'm trying to look at a really simple one. Here's one of the simplest ones there is. Just the hopper. All it has is one sequence, and in, and basically in a sequence, it goes and um, runs every single command. In a select, it chooses one command. So actually, the frog is probably a better thing to show you. Exactly. Yeah, I'm trying to put an incentive in the game to not overdose, right? <clears throat> um, it's not that hard if you already have an experience programming. So just just get started, man. And uh, I would I would recommend starting with and getting familiar with an engine. Uh, Daycon, what are you talking about? What language are you talking about? What language this is? If so, this is C plus plus. Yeah, this is so behavior trees basically it runs either sequences or selections. A selection basically chooses one of these. So if one of these sequences succeeds, 
then it doesn't go and run the next thing in the selection. So and basically it just breaks up the, a the AI into different little behaviors based on certain things. So for example, if this little section of this behavior right here happens if, it do if the AI does not have a target. So if the frog, the frog starts out with no target and um, if it has no target, it delays for a certain amount of time, random time, then it faces a random place and then targets the nearest fly. So that, that basically gives it a target from then on. So then the next time it comes and runs this sequence, it, it will have a target, so it won't do this part of the sequence. So it'll start some one of these other one things. If now if it try if it, it'll eat if it has a fly near it. So we've already targeted the fly, and now if the fly is nearby, then it'll face it, animate the eat, make the sound for eating, and then eat it by removing the target. So this is kind of how behavior trees work. And yes, I do have more videos on that. If you just go and search through my videos for behavior tree, you'll find it. And and when you find a video about it, you might need to go back a video or forward a video to see more of what's going on. Uh, Sergeant Sam, no, I'm not using Python. How many lines of code so far in this game? Maybe 30,000 or so. Yeah, 29,000. It's creeping up. A couple months ago, this was 22,000. Now it's 29. I don't want to increase it that much more, though. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out here. I'm going to go ahead and check this stuff in. I'm going to check it over, what I actually changed. I changed a lot in this check-in, so I want to make sure I go over this again and make sure I'm not checking in anything stupid or checking in any debug-specific code that I was using. Yeah, cool. So this is what I was talking about earlier about the integer vector class and simplifying it. I no longer need to call get width all the time. So like this bit right here where I was calling get width, that can just be x. Right here, I don't need to ever call 2 vec 2. I can just call pause. So I'm, I'm using the integer vector class more how it should be. And it simplified the code. All right, all this is looking okay. Here's a line I don't want in there. <clears throat> I think I have a breakpoint set for that, so I can easily go to that. Yeah, so I fixed this code. I don't need that. I don't need this breakpoint either. I don't think I need this either. Yeah, all those. Yeah, I have tons of those, Sergeant Sam. Yeah, that's a good point. In game development, you're always going to have bugs that you can't get to then. I have this list, which is... Shoot, look how long this is. Okay, these are all bugs from 87. So I have 87, about, about 87 different bugs I have not been able to get to yet. But I will get to them at some point. Okay, so now that I remove that, those little bits of code I know I don't need, I'm going to go and check over this once more, and check it in, and then work on the integer vector 3 class. So today's going to be mostly a code day. You know, some days I'm working on art, some days I'm working on music, some days I'm working on programming, some days I'm working on all three. Today is going to be mostly programming, mostly code, because I'm right in this zone on fixing this. And this is really going to simplify the whole game engine once positions are all 3D. Is my Git public? Definitely not. No, nope. this is a professional game. This is a full-length game. I would never just share all the source code. But I do have several things that I release on Git. 
aren't on GitHub. They're they're public things. So if anybody's wondering what code I do share, there's github.com slash natweese. And that's the stuff that I do share. And two things of note on there um, that you should check out are Rapid Game. If you're into Cocos 2DX, that's a game engine. that And Rapid Game basically simplifies Cocos 2DX. And if you're into making games, Entity Foo is also a really cool thing you should check out. That's the... Um, the Entity Component System I built for Songbringer. And so Entity Component Systems are amazing to work with. Definitely recommend that. Ah. A Git is a Git is a um, what are they called? A versioning system. It, it allows you to sh check in different versions of your files, roll back to old versions of your files, see the difference between the changes from these files to those files. It keeps things backed up in a way so that you're never losing stuff. Um, Git is essential for anyone that's doing programming, or any a versioning system. I would I should say is essential. It's an essential tool for programmers. So there's other there's other versioning systems out there. There's also SCM. There's um, CVS. Uh, no, Sergeant Sam, it's not, it's not a site, it's not a site to share software. No, I don't, I don't know what Microsoft T TFS is. What is that? I don't use Microsoft stuff very much at all. The only Microsoft stuff I use is Visual Studio to compile this game for Windows occasionally when I need to do that. Like when I release a new alpha version or stuff like that. Oh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, I haven't used it. Well, I haven't even heard of it. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad they finally wrote one. Um, I did use Microsoft products exclusively about, you know, 15 years ago when I was starting out. Um, so, for, but for the last 10 years, I've been on a Mac and I definitely prefer it. So, yeah, I, I definitely prefer Xcode as well for developing. You know, it's such a nice. Um, yeah, it is a really, really nice editor for sure. Autocomplete works is really well with it. Visual Studio is also really, really good, and it's gotten a lot better in the last few years. Really? Oh, I've never heard of it. Oh, is that is that the one they had for like a long, long time ago that used to come with Visual Studio? If so, I do remember that now. Oh, that's it. VSS. Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking of. Okay. Whoa, that's crazy. What are what a unorthodox way to teach C plus plus by <laughs> using a custom compiler? But I, how did that? I wonder if that helped you or not. <laughs> This is a pretty big change, this edit here, but 
very fundamental. You can see every single line of code that's been changed here is simpler. You know, I'm removing all this two vec two nonsense and um, get vec x and, uh, and stuff like that. Like this one right here, this get vec two x is turned into just x. Um, and it's yeah, it's just using integer floats in a really cool way. And um, like I said, the reason I use in this special integer float class is so that if I ever was to make this a real-time multiplayer game at some point, I could share, um, essentially share floating point values as integers so that they could actually be compared um, in the same same manner on any platform. And basically to, to iterate the... Um, the opposite of that, floating point values are not all equal. So, for example, I could send a floating point 1.1 value from a Windows machine to a Mac machine, and it would suddenly become 1.1000000007, and that would those would no longer be equal. So that's why I have this integer vector class. So. All right. Okay, so now that that's checked in, I can go and start clearing it up a little bit more too. So I can, I mean cleaning it up. I can do this, delete all these functions I didn't end up using. There we go, the much, much more simplified int val class. This thing's awesome. Okay, and now what's cool is I'm, ba I'm basing these new integer vector classes on int floats. So this used to be like this. I used to do my integer vector class with it, with actual integer members, but that really com that really added a lot of complexity. So now I'm using, I'm relying on int float, which is a more basic single valued integer float class as the members for integer vector. Hello, what's up, Hazard? <clears throat> Welcome back to the stream. All right. Let's get that, let's do a clean build now. We've got these cleaned up. Nice. Vec2 is just a vector class provided by Cocos 2 dx It's just a vector, it has an X and a Y, that's all. Very simple thing. And it's a vector in the sense of a, a math vector. A physics vector, not not a programming vector, which is actually an array. I don't know why they call those both the same thing. Hazard, yes, hello. Yep, I just said hi a second ago there to you, man. Yeah. Okay, um, this is all, yeah, apparently this is all necessary stuff to have all these in here. So, I'm all right, we're ready to do Intervector 3. Sucks, I was racking my brain this morning trying to think of a way that I could code this without doing it twice. Like if I were, if I were to do, it's like a, use variadic templates or something like that to do an integer vector with either two or three elements, but only write the code once. But the the drawback to um, variadic templates is that you can't have named parameters. So there's no there would be no way I could have a dot x or a dot y 
prefer to use variadic templates. Mail. Oh, no, I haven't checked my email yet today, man. Um, it's, it's, man, I get a lot of emails. I get a ton of emails, and they're not, it's so many are just like, dude. So anyways, I get so many emails that basically I have to, I have to move back my time for checking emails to leave that to the evening. So I'm on Twitter. I check Twitter often, um, but uh, I'd only check mail once in a while because I get so many emails from people like, for example, about Rapid Game or in other projects that I've started that are, you know, free things out there that are just meant to help people, but everybody wants help. So it's like, it's a really, um, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time for me to check email. So I will definitely get to my email tonight. I get to it once a day. So I do get to that, but um, yeah, I'll check that later on, man. Okay, so we're gonna do X, Y, Z. Oh, you sent me a message on here? Oh no, I, for some reason I did not get you that, get that from you. I don't know how, how do I get it, messages on here? Anyways, yeah, if you want to pre-order, it's on, it's just on songbringer.com. Yeah, go to songbringer.com, go to pre-order, the pre-order link, and you got all the links you need right there. And what's great about pre-ordering the game, and thank you for saying you like what I'm doing. I'm glad you like this game. But, um... Yeah, so if um, what you also get for pre-ordering the game is you get your name in the credits. So you get honorary backer status. So that means your name is on the main menu of the game for everybody to see. So right now I've already got like several, I've got about 700 different backers or whatever. They're all the backers from the Kickstarter basically are in this backers.txt. And so everybody's names are like actually credited right on the main menu. And some of them are even in gold because they backed at a certain level. So but anyways, um, if you pre-order the game, you get your name in the credits as well there. And you also get a bunch of other stuff. So it's all it's all there. And there's three different levels you can you can pre-order at. Alright, so just make this easy on myself. Convert all these infect twos to infect threes. All right, now we've got this integer vector three class started. Make sure that everything is going to be legit. Got X, Y, and Z there. Yeah, we need X here or Z here. Basically just applying Z to all these things. I know, so much overloading, right, to be able to do these classes right. But, you know, I've spent, I spent all day on this so far today, and these are actually all necessary in order for all the math. To, I had it for a while where, where I had, like, only half as many of these functions, but um, it turned out that I actually turned out to be buggy in the game. So I had to, I had to do this to keep this implementing, implemented right. Um, the pre-order works basically it's through Humble Bundle. So Humble Bundle keeps track of it all. Humble Bundle is pretty neat because they um, they they can they actually do fulfillment too. So when you order from from Humble Bundle, um, as soon as I finally get the 
the version up that you can download or whatever, you can you can pre-order it there. And basically, Humble Bundle gives me your email address. That's really how it all works. Is I just get your email address, and then um, when I have the version of the game that's that's for you, you get emailed a Steam code. This you enter the Steam code in, and then you can play the game and download it. So it's actually on Steam already for people that backed at the alpha level on the Kickstarter. Uh, Jarhead, what's GLM? Never heard of that. Is that an integer vector class or something? Yeah, which which GLM are you talking about, man? Yeah, which which one are you talking about? I just I just searched for it and I couldn't um couldn't find it. Uh, Pedro, yeah, one second, man. I'm still compiling some code here and this is still broken, so it's gonna take a second. Yeah, yeah. Which mat with li which library? Can you send me a link? Hello, head clock. What's up? Welcome. Yeah, um, this is not what I want right here. So yeah, Jarhead, this is a good question. You know, why am I not using a library for this? Because I'm using this thing called an integer float. And I, I just explained this a couple times, but I'll, I'll kind of try and explain it really quickly again. I'm using an integer a special integer float class, which converts floating point values into integers. So that um, if I were to ever make this game a real-time multiplayer game, I could compare two, the, two values which are um, actually floating, they're actually integers, but they can be compared as floating point values. So this is a totally different thing than using a library or whatever. This is a custom thing. <clears throat> That's why I'm, I'm using it. All right, did that work? Looks like we're compiling again, so I can show you the game. Yeah, so this is just like Zelda. There's an overworld and un and um, and dungeons. Got these you can eat cactuses and you gain psychedelic powers you it's a sci-fi game you have like these you have bombs you can blow up stuff you've got teleport cubes you can warp back to your ship I'm in permadeath mode so that's why I died I can't continue but anyways that's about what the game's like it's like it's like Zelda one but sci-fi and it's procedurally generated so it, it can generate a world based on the six letters you give it oh no worries man yeah that's a good question you had there about why I, why I wouldn't be using a library for that
Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna convert all these. Oops. All right, so another thing I'm going to start doing, oh, I need to do this is zero. All right, I think we're ready to try this out. So the point of all this was to take position components and turn them so they have no Z like this. This is going to cause a lot of errors in the game, but I'm going to start going and just fixing them all uh, because this is going to really simplify. All right, so here's where I'm going, and I'm basically just taking, wait, let's see if that particular bit of code right there compiled still. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'd definitely recommend it. This is the thing is probably going to cause a ton of errors, compilation errors. So for a while, the game is not going to be playable while I fix all this. But that's basically the purpose for today. Uh, thanks, Xbox Taco. I seem to get that a lot. All right, so I'm going to start adding some methods to the integer vector class to make it a little more friendly. One of them being the fact that it can be initialized with the vec2. 
So it just initializes its z to zero in that case. I'm also going to give position components the ability to initialize themselves entirely with from their constructor. Okay, one more convenience method to create here is the ability for integer vector 3s to automatically convert themselves into integer vector 2 using just their x and y. Okay, so what's the error here? Use of overloaded operator equals is ambiguous. I can make this explicit, but I'm wondering if there's a better way to do it. What time is it for me? It's 7 o'clock. This is a good, good point, Grubuck. I want to make it easy on myself and natural, but not dangerous. So I think I'm. <clears throat> you're bringing up a point that's actually echoed right here in this very error. This is an ambiguous thing because that operator in vec2, this actually, yeah, this might actually be the wrong thing to do right here. I'm gonna turn that off. Then it's not gonna it's not gonna give me an error on that on that line. Yeah, true, true. Mm. 
So I just I just spent I just wrote all this code to get rid of the two vec two, and I don't, I'm not sure if that I want to actually go. What if? Right, yeah. Maybe it's this that I want actually mean. It can initialize an inner vector three with a two. Mm. That's fine. Yeah, so it's still not happy with this line here. No viable conversion from infec3 to infec2. Why would it want to combine it to infec2 though? Oh, it's using operator plus. Oh, did I mess up these? Oh no. Uh, so, okay, I see what's going on here. The the vec two is being automatically converted into an integer vector two. By this line right here. but it's not using this to add them. It sucks. I don't know why it's not. I mean, some simple solutions. I could just make this an, I could make this an int vec three. That's weird. Why is it giving me this error again? Yeah, the position component is an int vec three. E dot position dot pause. Oh man, I really don't understand what the heck this is giving me an error here. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe it is. But I don't see why it would be because this is 
I'm adding an integer vector three. Here, what happens if I use a zero? Use the full definition of int vec three. That worked? No, it didn't work. Oh, right, maybe it does, Jarhead. That might be why I was doing that. Yeah, jar, yeah, it does take an int vec too. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, good call, Jarhead. Thank you, man, that was, that was the problem. So basically I had to force it into creating a vector two right here. Yeah, okay, that makes sense now. Good call. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on going with some other stuff. Noting that I can noting that. Remembering this. This is a pretty important lesson right here. All right, now that I have now that I can initialize position components 3D, I can do this p.x p.y and give it this manual z instead of having to go and do it later with this whole nonsense. I can do that, and that's way cleaner as well. Yes, yeah, you're the MVP already, man. You don't even have to do a jello battle for it. Yes, yeah, for that that last line, yeah, I did not care about the z vari variable. That was a 2D comparison. Create item. This create item happens at um, a 2D position. So yes. Good question. Very good question. I probably I probably should upgrade this so create item uses an infect three now so that an item could be actually created up high or down low. But for now I'm gonna leave it as it is just to try and get the game compiling as soon as possible. All right, so once again, we've got p dot x. This is gonna be minus three. p dot y, and then the z is 12 times i. Much cleaner, much cleaner to do this in the position component constructor, for sure. P dot x plus four. P dot y plus three. And 12 times i once again. These are the mountains right here. Components that create the mountains. This is kind of a long line right here, but better than that.
Yeah, true, true. Yeah, birds. That was a create item function. So that's actually for creating like a any kind of thing that you pick up, like an item. So yeah, it, but yeah, there might be a point where putting that in a tree would be a thing that could happen. So that is probably the thing I'll end up doing is converting that to a three D position. Okay, I'm gonna do, I think I, I can get away with adding one more convenience method here so that an integer vector two can be initialized with an integer vector three. And I hope this doesn't break anything. Oh, it doesn't know what that is? Probably not. Constructor cannot be redeclared. That's really weird to get that. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. Xbox. I don't know. It depends on the it depends on the enemies and the anim and the animals, whatever. Um, you can see the player already has four different directions, um, but it turned out to be a lot of work to do all that. So I liked having some enemies so that they only go left or right, east or west. Look at how many sprites there are for the play. Just the player. Those are all, most of those are sprites for the player. <clears throat> so this is super weird. I don't know why that is thinking it's redeclaring. Oh, it's unknown type name. Yeah, that's what I thought it was would be class config three. Ah, uh, this is super chicken and egg. So maybe that's not a good idea to even try that. I'm just going to ignore this for now. Yeah, a lot of sprites already. And I haven't even done... I haven't even done an eighth of the enemies that this game will actually have. There's going to be a lot more enemies. Good question. I don't know. I think I'm I think I'm using C++ 11 here. I know I'm using C++ 11 at least. I'm not sure if I'm using 14 or not. Yeah, totally, right? Yeah. It's a struct. Yeah. Oh, oh, would that have mattered? Good question. Let me try that. If I do Yeah, it's, yeah, now, see, now it's complaining because it's an incomplete type. But I, I guess if this were implemented in the CPP, yeah, yeah, thank you, Jarhead. Once again, once again, coming through, the MVV of the day. 
So yeah, if this were implemented in the CPP file, this would be okay. Let me try that. <laughs> kind of. How many enemies in the game so far? Um, I don't know. One, two. Well, these don't. Some of these don't count as two. Yeah, like less than ten. There's really less than ten enemies. There's two bosses. Maybe eight different kinds of enemies in there. Hey, what's up, Emma? Howdy, man. Yeah, I was on vacation there for a while. I was on vacation for like two weeks, so I'm back. We had a good trip. My girl and I went all the way to Canada. See, now we're getting this ambiguous operator equals. Now, I'm thinking it's because of that. That recent change. Oh, nice. Cool. Good for you, man. Where'd you, you have a good vacation? So P is an integer vector 2. We're using op equals. And E dot position dot pause is an integer vector 3. And now it's ambiguous because either. This can either be converted to an integer vector 2. I'm thinking that's what it is. Whoa, cold. <laughs> wow, well, was it nice? Nice cold or, or bad cold? So this is such a balancing act between convenience and what actually needs to happen. Trying to make it, I'm trying to make sure all the code that is written is natural looking and readable, but at the same time it has to work. Oh cool, nice. Okay, I know I want this to be a 2D position passed into here. It's tiles, there's not there's not 3D tiles right now. I guess there could be. But I don't want to redo the whole engine for this. I just want to I just want to get this working with 3D positions. So I could convert this to a vector 2. In fact, is this a vec2 that it's taking? No, it's taking an int vec2. I guess I do need to write a version of VEC2 operator.
Static methods to convert from one vec to another. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Grubuck. Yeah, that's what I would, that's what I just did right here with this V2. But it's not as natural. You know what I mean? I would love to be able to in this bit of code right here, where I'm calling this area dot tiles get tiles e e dot position dot pause. I think I would like I would like it to leave this code exactly as it is. That would be really nice, you know. And Jarhead's got an idea here, creating a static method. Uh, I think I I think I follow you. Convert from one vec x, yeah, to another, and overload assign operator. Lathoon, thank you. Thanks for letting me know. I know I've, I've seen this before. I've done a static method like this before for something else. Let me... If I'm on the right track, please let me know. To convert from one to another, so... Well, this would be a sta like an actual static method, right? Like a static function or a method? I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about here. Right, uh, that's what I thought you meant, yeah. Man, I, I, I know I've seen, I know I've, I've seen this before, Jarhead, but I don't know exactly what, how to do this. If you can provide any, an example, I would be much appreciated. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I would do... Okay, cool. I'm not exactly... Yeah. Where have I seen that before? I think I've seen it when working with string streams. Uh, overloading operator. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you call this operator. But I've, I know I've seen that over, overloaded with a static method before, and it was really weird, but it worked, worked magically. So yeah, I mean, this would work right here, this V2 line, and that would be clear, but I would prefer not to do this. Science to be done. Co thoughts on Coco Studio X versus Unity? Yeah, I have, I have lots of thoughts on that myself. And it's really, it's largely a matter of opinion. Um, you know, my opinion is I love I love true open source engines like Coco Studio X. It's been open source the entire time. I've always been able to edit it. Um, I can contribute to it. Um, but mainly, I can just, I can really get custom with everything. I could, if I wanted to change the way it created the window, I could easily do that. And I know Unity and Unreal finally just did that so that you can actually edit their source code, which is cool. But in this, but I don't know. I'm just more familiar with Coco City X at this point. And also, I like the fact that I don't have to pay for it. You know what I mean? It's free. That's pretty good too. But largely, I'm using Coco City X because I'm most I'm more familiar with it. Oh, it's called the output stream operator. Thank you. I, did, I've, I had no clue what that's called. Uh, yeah, no, this is actually a first. This is a first for me, making pixel art games. My buddy and I, the last game I worked on was called Hero Bash, and it was vector art. So yeah, it's this is what the art looked like for this game. I didn't make this art. My buddy made this art, and he did the design for the game. This is a MOBA for iOS. So I did all the programming and the music. But yeah, this is my first game ever actually doing any art. So this is a first for me. Um, and it's actually very fulfilling.
Nice, cool. Good for you, man. And yeah, I totally, I totally agree. I love pixel art. I actually adore pixel art. There's something very... I don't know. I just like it. I like it better than regular art. For, to me, pixel art says video game more than anything else. When I see today's games, they're cool. They're really fun to play. And there's some really excellent games out today. But all the 3D graphics have gotten so real. It's like almost like you're watching a movie now. So, I don't know. For some reason, that just doesn't say video game to me. Probably because I grew up, you know, in the 80s and the 90s when we all we had was pixels. This probably has a lot to do with it. It's like cave drawings. <laughs> yep. All right, well, I don't know. I don't know what to do about this. So, I'm just going to go. I'm going to move on. Use this V2 for now. Nostalgia, yeah, that's the word. It's not just nostalgia, neither. It's also aesthetic. You know, for some reason, I aesthetically am more attracted to pixel art. I love it for some reason, but only in the context of video games. You know, other if I were if I weren't playing a video game, I don't think I'd like it as much. It's not the right aesthetic. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yes, right? Yes. That's a really good point, science to be done. Wow. I I'm really I really appreciate you shared this. This is a this is a really deep point. I love it. It's true. When you look at a, when you look at pixel art, your brain does have to actually actively think and imagine Imagine what that would, it does take a second too. The first, that when you first look at pixel art, you're like, oh, it's just a bunch of blocks. But then your mind starts to imagine a little bit and then you see the picture for what it is. Maybe that's why some people hate it and some people love it. So I'm not, I hope I can find a way to do this more elegantly when using this dot V2. But if not, this will work. The, right? Yeah, exactly. The frog is a pretty good example of that. The frog jumping, you know what I mean? I was drawing this yesterday. I'm like, oh my God, this looks like crap. But then when you actually put it in context and you see it in the video game, it's like, oh my gosh, it actually looks right. It's a pretty good example. And it all, this also shows you what resolution this is. So it's like, it can be very difficult to try and draw pixel art with such limited amount of pixels, you know? Especially the butterfly. When I drew the butterfly, I'm like, I only have like three pixels wide. It's like impossible to try and draw a butterfly and they ended up looking like TIE fighters, but 
it it made a really funny joke for um for the button masher bros when they did their playthrough video of it they were like mini tie fighters which is another example that pixel art is a very imaginative thing to one person it looks like a tie fighter to the other person it looks like a bat to somebody else it looks like a butterfly Wow, this might actually compile. Oh, a couple more. Yeah, the butterfly, I mean, I'll, I'll show you once I get the game actually running, but I'll show you the graphic. There you go, that's it. It literally looks like a TIE fighter and it flies like this. Yeah, Lathoon, I already did that. I did do that. The second that um, Twitch actually released that new feature, I ch I turned that on right away. You're seeing this is actually the slow, the faster Twitch. What's up, Red Squadron? Hello. Working on some code. That's almost done. Where I'll have 3D positions. You're totally as a TIE fighter, right? Yep, almost. Right, how many times have I heard that before? Almost done. Okay, yeah, that's a VEC2, so I can do pause.x, pause.y, and then specify, specify the Z without having to add it afterwards, much cleaner. Let's see, no whammies, no whammies? Oh, we're actually linking again. Yeah, Xbox Taco, I I'm, I'm procedurally coloring it. So yeah, you're seeing it gray right here, but it's procedurally colored in the game. So in the game it adds blue or yellow or black or whatever. My set goal? Oh, my goal for not just okay, my goal for completion. Yeah, it's um I intend to finish the Steam version of Songbringer by January ish. So about six months from now. And then it'll also come out on iOS and Retro VGS. And then those are those are guaranteed. And then also um Android, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One if I can get the funding. Or the game does commercially well enough. Hey, look at that. Okay, so I'm actually able to the collision is still working, that's good. I've got 3D positions and the collisions are working. That's, that's freaking awesome, actually. I can still collide. All right, this is great. See if the water hoppers are still making their ripples. It looks like they're using their Z properly. The water hoppers are jumping into the air. <clears throat> right? I don't think I have either. Let me put the player in a more friendly position. Let's see if those ripples are still working. Oh yeah. Wait, sometimes they're not. That's weird.
Yeah, that is really, really weird. Sometimes these the ripples aren't working, and sometimes it's not landing. Okay, so it looks like the code for the landing sequence is not working now that we're using this new Z. Thanks for following, by the way. Yes, Swift Sailor, yes. It is, it's entirely Super Metroid inspired. Yep. I love Super Metroid's map the bet the most of all like you can see a lot of influences from Nintendo. I love Zelda, I love Metroid. These are my favorite games ever. So, you know, when I when I go to look for inspiration, I look to those first. Okay, so in the system for um, movement, uh, I think it's in move system move actually what I'm looking for. So let's go to move system move when it applies Z movement ah uh, so these are floats so one simple way to do this would be to convert these to ints or to use L round F because these are exact floats there's it's gonna be hard for sometimes for it to be exactly right so if I convert all these like this I think this should make it so the um, water hoppers and the frogs are gonna land again then I'm gonna I'm gonna take a closer look at this and see why I needed to do this because this is, doesn't look that pretty to me anymore. Yes, yeah, I made this game engine completely from scratch. Not not the game engine part of it. The Coco Studio X is that you mean the the graphics layer, the OpenGL, the file system, the handling, getting the startup code working, and all that. All that's Coco Studio X, but yes, everything else is my own custom game engine. Nah, it's still not working. Okay, well, it has something to do with this. Basically, what's what's happening is it's not triggering this code for the a for the entity to land. I think I'm gonna take a quick break and come back to this with a fresh mind. So yeah, I'll be right back. Leave the game running for a second. Well, what's that? <clears throat> uh, what's Xcode good for? It's good for making Mac applications and iOS applications or cross-platform applications. And I mean, it's it has C plus C and C plus plus built in, but yeah, no, I don't think it has. I don't think it has Java support. I don't think it has Python support. It does syntax highlight HTML, but you're probably looking for something like JetBrains or something. And no, I have not used Emacs, but I have used BIM. Yeah, I'll be right back. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, let's see why. <clears throat> oh, hey. Yeah, I was going to say JetBrains. JetBrains is probably the one you'd want to go with. Some kind of JetBrains IDE if you were doing Java, Python, HTML, and all that. Xbox, yeah. We, that's, that's, one of the ideas on the ideas list is to be able to do play the game with chat commands. I think it's possible. Jarhead, cool man. Yeah, let me try. I'm trying to understand this here. Um, Yeah, I, I get you with all this, but I don't see how this is going to help. I've already got this 2vec2 method, and I was I was interested in seeing what you're talking about, about the static methods, but I don't, I don't see any static methods here. But thank you for sharing this. Oh, I see what you're doing here. You're using inter indirection of v in this 2vec3.
Yeah, I, I've got one of those. Yep, I'm using that. That was the V2 method. So I've got this right here, Invec V2, same thing. So why would this... Um... Okay, I want to set up a breakpoint so we can see what happens when a water hopper lands. So I'm gonna have to hack this in. Normally I would use a conditional breakpoint for this, but I've found that conditional breakpoints don't work very well when you're comparing strings. And also I wanna do multiple things here. And also they slow things down like crazy. Yeah, I like the standing desk. I've been doing it for um, about three years now. And this isn't an actual standing desk. I'm actually in a closet. So, yep, I'm actually, I have my computer up there on the top of the shelf of the closet, and then I set my stuff on some boxes and stuff. So it's just a makeshift standing desk, and it works for me, and yeah, I love it. I, I love the way it keeps my spine nice, basically. Okay, so if before Z is say greater than one and after Z is less than one and we're the hopper, then we're gonna set up a thing so we can do a breakpoint so I can break, see what the heck is going on when the water hopper actually lands. Because they should be doing a lot more ripples, and the frogs as well should be landing and doing their, their ripple animation. I think it has something to do with the positions being rounded. Okay, so this should be a water hopper profile, profile, hopper, good. It's a hopper. Uh, base Z here is zero, so that means the ground is at Z of zero. Before this method, before this call, this movement, the Z was 1.5, and now the Z Is zero. Which is basey. Oh, I can see why this is adding can see why that would actually mess things up in certain cases.
Maybe it should be better expressed like this. The absolute value of current Z minus the base Z is less than 0 0.1. And the absolute value of the current, current Z minus the old Z is greater than 0 0.1. So let's turn off this breakpoint. Turn off all breakpoints. Run it again. See if we're getting them to land. And if not, Yeah, it's ah, it's so weird. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Taco. See you, man. So originally this was just like this. Hmm, it's a tricky one. I'm not sure what actually broke just yet. Uh oh. Okay, so the problem is that some of the water hoppers are skipping along and not leaving ripples. They're not triggering this landing here. Try that for the break point. I want to catch a certain water hopper. Thanks for following.
Okay, let's check this water hopper out. We got current Z is zero. Old Z is 1.5 again, base Z is zero. All right, we need to catch him in this act of this being false. Okay, looks like we got one. All right, so the current Z is 0.6. The last Z was 4.4. Yeah, 4.49. 4 Base Z is zero, that's the ground. Okay, so, okay, here it is. Good, we found one. Now, these should be equal. Both these should be true. What the heck? Yeah, it's, oh wow. Okay, let's run that again. Let's see what, I, I didn't even notice what the heck happened. I think because the, the debugger stepped over. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm stepping into the comparison operator. It's first creating a value to compare, which is taking the value 674. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's going to return 0.674 and position.pause.z. Or the base Z. It's still not happening. It must be some it must be something else. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is probably a good place to stop the stream and just take a break. Because, okay, so we'll, we'll, I'll just recap what's going on at this point. Um, I've spent the entire day working on new integer vector classes so that the code is a bit more simple and long term. So now I've got things working again. The integer vector class is mostly working, but there's this one little case where the water hoppers should be skipping along and leaving lots of ripples when they land on the water. And also the frogs 
should jump and then land. They'll, they'll hit the ground. They'll hit the bottom and go boom. They're done with their jump. And um, and they go back to the animated position where they're on when they're sitting there like they are right now. So they're jumping and they're staying in the jumped animation, which is wrong as well. So there's just two little issues that I can see with turning into these 3D positions. So once I can get those two issues fixed, then I can check this new code in. So yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, uh, once again, this game is called Songbringer. It's coming out in like January for Steam. Later on, it's coming out for Retro VGS. Um, and yeah, I'll be back again tomorrow. Same, roughly same time, Pacific time, 4 p.m. ish. So, cheers everybody. Thanks for watching.